Welcome to lesson four. In this lesson, we will talk about Newton's laws. We will also define quite a few new terms, and we will come to understand what is energy and how we can use energy to understand the orbits of the planets. So I hope you enjoy the lecture, and as always, let me know if you have any questions. In this lecture, we're going to talk about motion and how we understand motion, um, why things have motion, and how that motion changes, what causes the change in motion. Um, to do that, we're going to have to develop a set of definitions and a common language that we can all agree on. And we use very precise definitions to describe motion. I will start with speed. Speed is the rate of change of position. So as you move down the road, um, you might be familiar with going 50 miles an hour or 50 kilometers an hour. So your speed is your distance divided by the time. Um, we use units of meters and seconds. Um, something that's a little bit different from speed is velocity. Um, for instance, if I was going to throw a ball at 10 miles per hour, would you know if you wanted to get ready to catch it or not? Well, you wouldn't know which direction I was about to throw it in. So I've only given you one piece of information there. If I said I was going to throw it at 10 miles an hour in your direction, then you would know to get ready to catch the ball. I have given you two pieces of information. I gave you a speed, 10 miles per hour, and a direction towards you. Having both of those pieces of information, you now know the velocity of the ball. So a velocity has a speed and a direction. So you might be driving on the expressway at 65 miles per hour due east. Another term that we want to define is an acceleration. And the acceleration is the rate at which the velocity changes. So if my speed is changing, um, say for instance I'm at a stoplight and the light turns green and I put on the accelerator, as my speed changes I'm undergoing an acceleration. In physics, if you were to put on the brakes and slow your speed, you would also be under an acceleration. In this case it would just be a negative acceleration. So an acceleration can cause you to speed up or slow down. Also, since it's the rate of change of velocity, if you are changing direction, you also have an acceleration, even if you maintain the same speed. So as you go around a corner in the car, you are also accelerating. So the units for acceleration are velocity over time, so that's meters per second per second, or sometimes we would say meters per second squared. On the website, and in Angel, in the file folder, you will find an example of how to work with these, um, how to work with velocity, acceleration, and displacement. And there's a couple exercises on that worksheet. Uh, make sure you place those in the Dropbox for this lesson. So we want to talk a little bit about the acceleration due to gravity. And if you were to drop an apple and a bowling ball, um, under with no air resistance they would fall at the same rate and the acceleration they would fall at would be 9.8 meters per second per second so that tells us that if I was to drop an object after one second it would be falling at 9.8 meters per second and after 10 seconds it would be falling at 98 meters per second so every second it falls it gains 9.8 meters per second in its velocity so Galileo is the first one to show this, that no matter what you drop, um, it doesn't depend what the mass is, it will fall at the same rate. He also suggested that objects in motion would not change their motion without an acceleration, which will become Newton's first law. Well, in my left hand I have a, a feather, in my right hand a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? So we can see that an object or two objects, when we release them um, in the absence of any type of air resistance, that they will fall at the same rate. So that brings us to a discussion between what is the difference between weight and mass. 
A common definition of mass is how much matter an object has. Um, we will have a better definition by the end of the lecture. Um, weight is how much force is acting on an object. I'm sure you've all been on a roller coaster, and you know um, when you start down the first large hill, um, you feel weightless. So there, um, the force acting on you due to gravity is not being countered so you don't feel your weight at that point you're weightless at the bottom of the hill where you're being pushed down into your seat you're feeling like you have more weight than normal so your weight can change depending on what forces are acting on you but the amount of material in your body remains the same so your mass is constant while your weight will change so two more terms that we want to define are momentum and force. And a momentum is an object's mass multiplied by its velocity. So P is the symbol we use for momentum. So P equals M times V. So if I have a one kilogram softball and I throw that at 10 meters per second, then I have a momentum of 10 kilogram meters per second. Also, if I have a 10 kilogram bowling ball and I throw it at one meter per second, I still have the same momentum of 10 kilogram meters per second. So the momentum is the product of a mass times a velocity. Isaac Newton, who um, we talked a little bit about in the last lecture, showed us that the net force acting on an object is equal to its change in momentum over the time in which that change takes place. That usually means that the object will be accelerating, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Objects that are rotating can also have a momentum. They will also want to keep moving, and so the momentum due to a rotating object is called its angular momentum. Also, a common misconception is there is no gravity in space. Um, there is gravity in space, but you are in a state of free fall just like going down that first big hill on the roller coaster, um, you'll be weightless if you're orbiting the Earth. So Newton proposed putting a cannon on top of a very large mountain. And if you just give a cannonball a little bit of momentum or shoot it out at a slow velocity, it will land at a certain place back on the Earth. If you give it a little bit more velocity, it will land a little further away on the Earth, but it will still come back to Earth. If you give it just the right amount of velocity, that cannonball will orbit the Earth and come back and hit the back of the cannon. If you give it more velocity than that, we will call that the escape velocity, and that's how much velocity you have to give it to escape Earth's orbit. So an object that is falling around the Earth and not falling into the Earth is orbiting the Earth. So there is a perfect balance between its forward motion and the pull of gravity to result in an orbit. So astronauts in orbit are in a constant state of The free orbiter fall, and the crew are traveling so fast that they're in perpetual free fall as they orbit around the Earth. But what is an orbit? Down here on Earth, even a high-velocity bullet will hit the ground at about the same time as the ejected cartridge. Gravity wins. But imagine that you could have a super high-velocity bullet and that you could strip away the Earth's atmosphere to eliminate drag. Then the falling bullet would follow the curve of the Earth and never hit the surface. If you weren't careful, you'd shoot yourself in the back. Sealed against the vacuum of space, the crew are inside a huge bullet, the orbiter, traveling at ten times rifle speed. They and Discovery are falling around the Earth at exactly the same rate. So the astronauts float around inside the cabin apparently weightless, even though they haven't escaped from the Earth's gravity. So astronauts in space are weightless because they are in a constant state of free fall. They have the same amount of mass as they would on Earth, but their weight is dramatically different. The next thing we will talk about are Newton's laws and a little bit about Isaac Newton, and we will do that in the next segment of the lecture.